Hello, everybody. My name is Andre. I'm the CEO of Restec. We have developed a new technology that hockey players put on the blade of their hockey sticks to make them better players. It improves their shot speed and shot accuracy. Good morning, Andre. <laughs> well, good morning. Good morning here in, in Massachusetts. <laughs> uh, good afternoon here in lovely Bratislava, Slovakia. I love it. I love that my friends and my beautiful businesses are all over, all over the world. Um, I want to hear about you. Like, where did this company start from? Start, like, where, how was this company developed? But let's start with you. So I'm a hockey player and I've been playing hockey since I was four years old. I was always trying to look for new products and new training and whatever to make myself a better player. I was trying out a lot of products, uh, stumbled upon some competition from uh, hockey tape. I tried them all, didn't work really well. I, we thought we could make it better. And about two and a half years ago, we started our company that has one goal in mind and it is to improve the performance for hockey players by adding a new material instead of hockey tape. So basically, it's a sport. It's my favorite sport. I have a lot of passion for any kind of sports, but especially hockey. So basically, I'm working in the area or in the industry, which is not only a job for me, but also my passion. So I'm really happy. So start playing. Like, I mean, it's hockey big in, um, I mean, it's, it's hockey big in your area, number one. And number two, uh, everyone I know that plays hockey depends on the tape. I mean, it's like, I mean, you watch hockey and you're seeing the tape. What's wrong with it? All right. So, yes, uh, I would say hockey and maybe soccer are the two major sports in my home country. Uh, it's not a sport that is uh, equally popular all across the world. So basically, there's about 15 to 20 countries where hockey is considered to be something of a national or a popular sport. Mm -hmm. So so basically that much for hockey. And uh, second of all, you're absolutely right. 900 percent of players tape their sticks before they actually go and play a game. It's a tradition that has been around for actually longer than 100 years without any kind of scientific, uh, uh, I mean, scientific proof that what it does to your performance. And that's what actually what we're bringing to the table. We are basically saying that if you're spending 300 bucks for the new state-of-the-art hockey stick that makes you a better player, you don't want to wrap the most important part of it in $3 tape that hasn't been evolved in over 100 years just because it's a tradition so every tradition you can look at from a scientific and a performance perspective and if you can make it better then that's what you should do if someone was saying what does a hockey player know about science science and technology and i mean you're saying i mean you're, you're throwing out all these words and for and i'm not saying that a hockey player is not brilliant and smart and highly educated but I'm playing the sport and again I'm playing the sport and it's like about my skill sets not some tape or a stick what would you say to someone that's saying that to you well we are trying to when we explain it to hockey players we are trying to put it in perspective that everybody understands so basically when you shoot the puck and it's behind the goal line earlier or faster because your shot is harder and more accurate you're gonna score more goals mm -hmm. so if you want to score more goals and there the answer is yes to every hockey player, maybe except goalies who obviously want to stop more goals and not score them. Then everybody's looking at the equipment and saying, does it help my game? Uh, does it make me safer? Uh, for example, when I buy a new helmet or does it help my performance if I buy uh, a new stick? Can I shoot harder with it? And if the answer is yes, then they're definitely looking for that product. And we're basically in this category. So Restec, is a performance material that you add to your blade instead of tape and your shot is faster. So basically this, everybody can understand. You don't have to be very scientific about it. And that's, that's, the, first, that's the first kind of like idea that we need to get into players' heads. So they try it out. And then when they like it, they just keep using and using it because just like the hockey tape has been around for a hundred years, uh, who's here to say that Restec cannot be not cannot be around for a hundred more years from now? Well, why why the tape anyway? I mean, like, what, I mean, where, where you said over a hundred years? Why did they even start using tape on the sticks? Because I mean, it's a perfectly great stick. I mean, baseball players don't put tape on their baseball bats. Um, wood is wood is wood. So explain why even bother with the tape? 
So basically, uh, the tape itself had two functions. One of them was protective to protect the wooden blade so it doesn't attract water and doesn't get chipped and makes it longer lasting. So one of the functions was protective. And the other one was that usually they're covered in resin, makes the, makes the blade a little slippery and you have a harder time controlling the puck. So you're actually adding a little bit of friction to the blade of the hockey stick to be able to control the puck better and to shoot it from your blade. Uh, right now, for about 20 years, or maybe even longer than 20 years, the hockey sticks are not made of wood anymore. So the protective function of tape is no longer needed at all. But still, there is the friction element that you need to add to your blade in order to control the puck better. So all the sticks are made with blades that are slippery and with very little grip. And the tape is added for you to get a better feel for the puck and to be able to shoot it better from the blade of your hockey stick. So even up to this day, there is a reason why players are adding tape because they can control and shoot the puck better than with a bare blade of a hockey stick. I love these conversations because it's always educational for me. I mean, as a marketing person for me, I'm lucky to be with all different people from all different parts of the world that are from all different industries. And I feel like every day I'm like, I learned something new today, which is very exciting. <laughs> I love it. Um, what has this done? I mean, look, obviously all sports have ended. I mean, we are waiting to find out when this will happen, um, that we will be able to watch sports in live, not like sports of 20 years ago or five years ago. Um, what has the, in, I mean, what does this mean for you and your team? Well, so basically we, we actually have been uh, on business in United States and in Canada right when they canceled NHL. So basically the National Hockey League was canceled, I think it was May 12th, and we were, we were just having meetings about when to launch our product, how to launch it, who the partners will be, how the retail is going to be involved in our North American launch, that yep. we were planning actually for, uh, for the holiday season of this year. Now obviously, since uh, all sports, not only hockey, but hockey especially, was stopped pretty much maybe in a week all across the world. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the whole industry where to, went to something, uh, I wouldn't call it sleep, it's more of a hibernation because yeah. the offices of the biggest companies are closed down, they're working from home, um, uh, they're, they're re, re, revising all their launches and uh, the way they're conducting business right now. So basically, we are, we are definitely in an industry that has come not to a, uh, a downfall but to a complete stop from uh, within that week mm -hmm. so basically uh, for us as a company it means that we needed to uh, very quickly react to the situation obviously uh, stop all our marketing and sales activities because if people are not playing you're not selling product the stores are closed so you're not selling product uh, we have a e-commerce solution where people can order it but nobody's ordering when there is no sport because they don't need new equipment. So basically, it was uh, Tuesday, looking kind of okay, to Thursday, hockey's dead every, everywhere across the world. And we have, we have that advantage as a, as a startup and as a pretty small and flexible team that we can basically meet in our office and kind of like do the decisions by ourselves very quickly. So we immediately um, cut all unnecessary spending to prolong our runway as a startup and to be able to get out of the crisis or the pandemic or whatever you wanna call it, even stronger than before. So basically we are taking the time to improve our argument for why Restec is the next generation product for hockey players. And we're also spending a lot of time these days talking to our potential launch partners within the North American market about how to make it better when we are there. So basically, it's, it's, not a, it's not a conversation if it will happen, it's more of a conversation how to make it happen and when, and how to be better than we were three months ago because we had some time to rethink our approach, think about our marketing, think how we wanna um, come across to our customers at retail level, how we wanna talk to our pros while doing our kind of like actual business of talking to the players and uh, keeping all those relationships in the industry 
kind of like strong and also open for the future. So basically that's what we've been doing the last, I think, two months. So, so were you guys in, I mean, are you guys in homebound or are you able to move around? How, like, how was it affecting your country? Uh, so our country was very strict from the, from, uh, from like day one. So basically Slovakia has the lowest, I think, cases and deaths per capita in Europe. Uh, so actually the, the, while we were in the United States and Canada for a week, our schooling system completely shut down, our borders completely shut down, every, every store, every shopping mall, everything was shut down when we got home. And we, uh, as we were entering from a different country, we actually had to go into a 14 day um, self isolation. Uh, so, so basically our country from a healthcare and medical standpoint is handling the coronavirus very well. Mm -hmm. And we are, we are obviously homebound doing a lot of Zoom, Skypes, et cetera, et cetera. And then about two weeks ago, we started going back to our office, but basically just for those kinds of meetings you need to take face to face, but we are trying to keep it as low as possible and doing even, even us as a team, we're mostly communicated through Zoom or phone calls or however, without actually being in the same room. So your product is being used by a lot of pro athletes. Um, one, who are a few of them, if you can say their names, and two, are you communicating with them now um, to reassure them that you're still there for them? Yeah, so basically, uh, when starting from the biggest superstars, uh, Zdeno Ochara, the captain of the Bruins, is a longtime user of our product. Roman Yossi, the captain of the Nashville Predators, one of the best defensemen in the world. Uh, probably the team where we have the most players is Detroit Red Wings, when, where we have four players uh, from the 20-player roster that are actually using our product in everyday games. We also have players in Chicago. We have players in Las Vegas, Toronto, and uh, I, think, I think two more clubs uh, that don't pop in my head right now. Uh, basically, yes, we're, we're talking to them, not necessarily about you know, hockey and what's going on because they, they know very little because the, and, the, and the situation is evolving every day. So we just make sure that we're in touch with them and that they know that when hockey's back, they can expect that we are back as well and they can still count on our product being delivered to them just the way they're used to it because it's very important, especially for the top level pros. Every, so everything has to be in order. And that's uh, not only considering their training or their facilities, but also their equipment and also the accessories they're using for everyday practice. So basically we're, we're talking to them on a, I wouldn't say every week, but we are staying in touch either directly or through their equipment managers or through their agents or representatives because we we don't talk to every single player in person me or or my co-founder so basically we're we're trying to keep those relationships so they know that when they are back on the ice we are still there and our product is still there helping them be better players i feel that you and your co-founders are managing a lot during this time how are you balancing keeping your company um going keeping it strong keeping the relationships um, on target and being at home and managing your families at the same time? Uh, very good question. <laughs> we are, uh, it, it, started, it started to be a little too much because we are both co-founders. We have small children and uh, the small children are obviously home right now because there's no kindergarten, there's no schools. Yeah. So basically this definitely becomes an issue. Uh, you, I mean, you can handle it for a week or two but then when you have to take really serious phone calls, you can't do it with a five-year-old begging you to play PlayStation <laughs> against him. And he's right. My, my son is right now in the phase where he wants to play hockey on the PlayStation, like at least eight hours a day. So basically <laughs> you can't do any work. So um, we're obviously having our kind of like silent and focused time that our family has to understand. But mm -hmm. since the offices are reopened, we usually, go there and do the work that needs to be done where you have that very high level of focus over there. And then basically it's just trying to juggle, uh, juggle with uh, the family time and also be there for the family. We have a very specific situation because right now we're in Slovakia, we're six hours ahead. So, so it actually can be done because the, the, the morning time is a time where nobody in United States or in Canada is actually awake and conducting any business. 
And then in the afternoon, people wake up, start emailing. You can have your Zooms or your other calls. So basically, after a couple of weeks, we find a routine. We found a routine where we, in the afternoon, usually have meetings, and in the morning, we can actually focus and do our our meetings as founders or our employees. And we can also uh, have that time to do any strategic things that we really need to focus. I, I, I've met your beautiful family. I mean, they're just so, so sweet. I love your family. Um, <laughs> and I, I think that it's, it's commendable for any spouse, um, whether female or male. Um, when you start a business, it takes a toll on them. It takes a toll on them because um, starting a business um, is not easy. It's not easy at all. So in this time, there's so many people that are looking to consider, they're considering it or they are really ready to jump ship and start their own businesses. What would you say are the highs and what, are, what would you say are the low, highs and lows of starting your own business? Well, I have to say that my family is kind of used to it right now because I think this is my 11th year as an entrepreneur. So basically they're, they're used to either long hours or, you know, like being, just being flexible because you, you have to do that and you have to put in maybe a little more work than somebody working for a large corporation and working from eight to five or something like that. But I think those two are slowly starting to get together, especially with home office and with Zoom and everything else. It's basically just doing it, putting in the hours and doing the work. And for everybody who wants to start their business, I will definitely say, yes, do it. Because the longer you think about it, the more reasons you will find why not to do it. So sometimes it's even uh, sometimes it's greatest just to just to start doing it and then figure figure it out on the way. Because one thing I can assure them is or you that uh, after you start your own business, you will have so much experience just in the first couple of weeks or months that you even don't want to go back to what you've been doing before just because you learned so much. So that was basically my. Uh, my understanding of uh, doing business. So yes, you should have a business plan. Yes, you should be able to fundraise. But you know, like if you have a great idea, start working on it the next day, and then you you will see it's it's gonna show you really fast if it's a good idea or not a good idea. So basically, just uh, I know a lot of people who talk about it for a really really long time, and then they find out that they have a mortgage, they can't get they can't get out without their pay. And it's too late for them and they're probably going to regret never uh, kind of like trying out, moving out for themselves. So, so, so do it. You, so you say 11 years of this part or 11 years in total of just working on different products? Well, this is, this is my, uh, this is not my first company. So uh, 11 years ago, I, th I think it's just 11 years ago, I quit my job at PlayStation and started working uh, on my own company. So basically it was not one company. I sold uh, two of my previous companies. I bankrupted uh, two of my previous companies. And this is, I don't know if it's uh, the fifth or sixth right now, but I think I am, I should already know what I'm doing a little bit <laughs> right now. I feel like different products deserve different times and needs. Um, in your community, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you are going out and you're food shopping. What are you seeing with the community um, in regards to the small businesses and how they're pivoting? Uh, well, right at the beginning, uh, a lot of people couldn't even comprehend how major the impact is going to be on their business. So at the very beginning, uh, there, I was very surprised. There were a lot of small and medium business owners that were still thinking this is not going to affect me. So I think, I think the best, I think the best uh, approach is act quickly, cut everywhere where you don't have to kind of like do any unnecessary expense and then when when the economy is starting to slowly picking up you're going to capitalize a lot more than than the business owners that that took a while longer to actually to adjust to it and i see i definitely see a lot of uh, pivots or different projects going on within companies so every time where there's a company that has some kind of assets like a production line that is doing something or maybe just for very good people for digital marketing. You should definitely think of uh, what are the assets of my company right now that I can use for something that is in high need right now, mm -hmm. but not start, don't start doing it immediately. Just kind of like evaluate for at least a couple of days or a week, like what can be the things I can actually commit to? Because the, the question that what then comes to your mind, well, if they're at least a bit successful, 
are you going to come back to your original concept that you were doing for four years or are you yeah. ready to throw it overboard? And basically this is, this is a very hard decision that needs a lot, maybe also, you know, talking to your spouse or talking to your friends or talking to other people in the community, but you should, you should, uh, you should think about it for a while because to throw away something you've been working on for three years, just because right now everybody wants face masks doesn't have to be the smart choice for your future career or your company. Yeah, true. If this, uh, in a perfect world, when, um, in a perfect world, this ends tomorrow, like we go back to normal, what's your first day look like? Uh, well, you mean if I go to office or what do I do? It's up to you. Your answer is your answer. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, for us, it's business as usual. We are right now as a company and also as founders fully adapted to the situation and what it looks like right now. So basically, I'm, whatever happens, we are, we are ready for multiple scenarios. So basically, uh, even our, our, our government is currently uh, thinking about opening schools and kindergartens, which will allow the people to go back to work. But uh, my job is not bound to going to work. Uh, and I'm putting, I'm putting in the hours and, uh, and uh, thinking about my company anyway. So I don't think anything major changes for me. The, the, the biggest change for me would be probably being able to travel because the lot, lot of, lot of the relationships that we have built with the players or with the companies or advisors or mentors are based on face-to-face -face conversations and on human relationships. So basically uh, my, my biggest, uh, probably my biggest difference would be to be able to travel and to go to those meetings in person. But, but actually to go back on that, I can see now how much money we're actually saving on doing those online. And if everybody else is doing it, you don't really need to go. So the question is, do I really want to be in 14 days of quarantine or self-isolation just because I wanted to take that meeting in person? No, I don't. It's taking time away from my family. It's, uh, it's messing up my, my daily rhythm. So if I can take the meeting online, I'm the first one to say, you know, screw personal meetings. I mean, you can do them. You can do them online also. Why bother? Screw personal, screw personal meetings for now, not forever, for now. No, not forever, but, but right now I would, actually, I would actually think twice before kind of like making a one week run to United States for, to have four meetings every day and then you know, kind of like get back. And we did that with my co-founder, I would say eight times during the past two years. And it's just physically exhausting and also mentally to kind of like do, and you, and you think you have to do it, but right now we're, we're actually running our company without doing it. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's not about not traveling at all, but it's maybe for choosing the opportunities where you can maximize your presence and maybe take all the other meetings with, uh, through Zoom. So basically I would really prefer talking to you in person right now, but right now of this is- Of course you would. <laughs> <this is> <laughs> Um, you said, you said something really, uh, very interesting, um, is you have put into place a lot of different scenarios. Um, I love that because I think that people are not putting into place a lot of, they're, they're putting in place one or two or even just one. So, uh, what are a few, you don't have to tell me like all, but just like one or two scenarios that you came up with that will help you with your company and, or, or better yet, no, better yet. I don't want you to tell yours, but how does one prepare or design a scenario so that way they can plan for anything that comes up? Well, I think the, the easiest and the easiest to, to kind of like get yourself ready to is uh, the scenario that is like the absolute worst possible thing that can happen. So basically, if I, if I would put it in a situation for our company, that would be, for example, hockey will be never ever played again on this planet because whatever. And uh, that obviously kind of like kills our company, but does it really? Can we find other applications for, the, for our assets, for the production line, for the customization features, for our relationships that we have within the in industry and with the mentors and with the, and with the investors? So basically, if, if there's no more hockey, it, it seems like a potential darkest scenario for us. 
but maybe we have to look outside of hockey, find another use case, and then maybe we figure out in a very short time that that other use case we're looking for is actually much bigger than hockey or maybe solves an even bigger problem with our material. So yeah. basically, it's very freeing to imagine that what your company is currently selling it will, not, will cease to exist because there is no need. So for example, if you're running a restaurant, try imagining that no people will be ever allowed to have lunch at your place. Mm. Because, I don't know, because eating will be only for home. And you have, you have a scenario of food delivery, which I think all the restaurants around the world are doing. They yeah. should have been doing it for a long time now. But right now they're understanding that this is not a perk, but it's an absolute necessity for their business. And obviously painting the most, painting the best scenario, I don't think it does anything to you. I mean, the darker the scenario, the, the, the better ideas are going to come out of it because saying everything will go back to normal and I'm just going to conduct my business like I did before. You don't need no scenario or preparation for that because that's what you've been doing for the last yeah. couple of years. Yeah. Oh my God. Great answer. I love that one. That was fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, we, also, we also have a, we also have a saying that in, in this, well, not a saying, we, me and my co-founder, we're using it a lot that uh, right now during these times, we're trying to not scream harder about us, but to improve our argument. So basically mm. we're, we're trying to do things that are going to do the work for us when this is over. So, and I, and I cannot comment on the specifics because we're, those are a little bit undercover, what we are working on, but basically- I don't wanna know your secret sauce. I want you to yeah. know your secret sauce. <laughs> yeah, so, but, but basically when we come out of it uh, and somebody else looks at us as a company and knew us before the crisis, mm -hmm. it's gonna be, oh, so this is what you guys been doing in the three months. Oh my God, that was pretty smart. So that's the mm -hmm. point of, uh, of what we are trying to do right now. Awesome. Uh, last question. Uh, what is your ask? I mean, the, in every single, um, this is an opportunity for all of us and we have an abundance of time. Um, but everyone should know that as a small business owner, you are doing great things. So what is your ask for anyone that is listening to this conversation? Uh, my, my personal ask, my business ask, or, or just ask? Both. Well, uh, if you if you like what you heard and you and you think you can you want to be part of it, reach out to me and maybe we can figure out some uh, synergies on the way where we can kind of like join forces because I know there's a lot of smart people right now that their their business is either brought to a stop or or is really kind of like turning down and they have a lot of time on their hands and sometimes and th this is what we are doing we are also reaching out to other business owners trying to understand what they're struggling with and maybe join forces in areas that didn't even cross our minds when we had, you know, like meeting after meeting before. So if you, if you think there, there can be some synergies, reach out to me and I'm more than happy to help or to kind of like learn about your problem and maybe I can help you or you can help me. You are the best, Andre. Thank you so very much for taking time out of your afternoon um, and your family and um, when this is all done, I'm literally going back full circle of every single person I spoke to um, and to hear what you're, what, what, what you're up to and what's going on. So thank you well, so thanks, much for your time. Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm really glad to have seen you again. All I know. This, this, is a great, this is great for me too because I get to catch up with all my friends all over the world. So this is really fun. And I'm really, really happy that I have so many amazing people that inspire me. So you are one of the people who, since day one that I met you that you blew me out of the water. So I really oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Have a great day. Thanks for having me.